Hi guys and welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Today we're moving on to the second topic of the Year 11 WJEC Biology Spec, which is cell division and stem cells. And in this video today we're going to be discussing the first four spec points because they all revolve around these two things here, which is cell division, which is mitosis and meiosis, which we'll go into in more detail with their functions, what divisions are happening here and the problems that can happen. So firstly, they want you to know that chromosomes are linear arrangements of genes and they are found in pairs in body cells. So what is this word chromosome? So the word chromosome is basically chroma, which is color, and some, or which is body, so a colored body. And when they first looked down the microscope and discovered these things, that's how they appeared to be. So that's where the name comes from. They, they're, all they are are linear arrangements of genes. So we'll learn a bit more about what genes are and how that they create us as human beings and all the other organisms in um, the next topic in 2.3. But for now, you just need to know roughly how things are stored. So you may have heard of DNA before. So deoxyribonucleic acid codes for everything that we are. So it does this by um, basically being an instruction booklet for the cell to create things from it, depending on what it needs to do. So DNA has its own structure, which again we'll talk about in the next topic. But you need to know that DNA basically structures itself in chromosomes in the nucleus of cells. And the reason it needs to do this is because DNA uh, is structured as a big long chain. Now having a big long chain in your nucleus like this would be a really inefficient way of storing space because the DNA would take up the whole cell. So what they do instead, so that's a big no-no, what it does instead is it wraps itself around other proteins until it can condense itself into this coil again and again and again and again until it forms this chromosome shape here, this X. Now most of the chromosomes are X-shaped. The, the gametes, the ones that uh, mostly determine our gender, uh, they there can be a, a Y, so it's missing one of these tails. But we'll talk about that in another topic. So for now though, these chromosomes, these X-shaped things, they, they live in the nucleus usually wound up like this so instead of this messy cell here you'd have lots of little X's instead within the nucleus just like this is showing here instead of it being all over the place similar to when you go to the craft shop you buy a ball of yarn rather than uh, a big long string of yarn that you'd have to carry out with you in a big bundle so that's why it does that for storage so because DNA codes for everything, it's found in every cell, it's found in the nucleus, and we have two pairs of each gene from parents. So genes being a section of the DNA as depicted down here. Um, they're not always the same length, they don't always contain the same things, but these genes are like chapters of a book, so they encode for different parts of us that make us us, like so. And we have two pairs of each gene from our parents. Now it's worth pointing out here that the way they've drawn the chromosome in this X shape, that is um, a legitimate way of drawing a chromosome, but it depends on what stage the um, DNA is in as to what kind of shape it takes. So sometimes you'll see chromosomes kind of drawn like a bendy shape like this. And this would be uh, one chromosome from one parent. And then you might have um, another similar looking shape, which would be the same chromosome but from the other parent so this one from dad and this one from mum okay now they encode the same things but they might have different forms of the same gene on each side so dad might have uh, the blue eye gene here whereas mum might have the brown eye gene here okay they're still both eye genes they still encode for the eye color but um, this is how they would be presented. Now, where you have this X shape, sometimes that can be depicted as a stage in cell division. So part of the stages involves replication. So it kind of looks like this. So this could be all one chromosome during replication for a dad, or it could be just the two joined together. But either way, this is one chromosome. So there are two types of cell division. There's mitosis and meiosis or meiosis. Now you do need to know the spelling of these. So make sure you memorize these if you, if you do struggle with spelling before the exam, because the, especially this bit here, the E and the I, the E comes before the I, which is kind of why I pronounce it as, my, as um, meiosis, just so I know um, that this comes first, but that's just me. 
So what are the functions of these two different types of cell division? So you need to know that mitosis is the one that happens uh, across all cells most of the time for things like growth, so to grow organisms, to for, you know grow us from babies to adults, for plants to grow upwards, and also to replace worn out cells. So we, we are constantly replacing our cells in our bones, our blood, um, everywhere around our body, um, the cells are constantly regenerating. Also to repair damaged tissues. So if you have wounds or if you have um, like a disease or pathogens, uh, the body will seek to repair these damaged tissues by completing some cell division through mitosis to replace anything that's dead or needs to be changed out. The function of meiosis, on the other hand, is to form gametes. So gametes is another word for sex cells. They are your eggs and your sperm cells. And they go for a slightly different process because they have to split their DNA um, into half, basically. And you'll learn more about uh, how that works later on. But for now, mitosis, these are the functions. Growth, replace worn cells, repair damage. Meiosis, form gametes. And you need to know the spelling. So moving on to the outcomes of cell division. So firstly, mitosis, what are the outcomes? So you don't need to know how this process happens, all of these steps in between, but you do need to know that a cell starts off uh, at the beginning here. And if the cell is at the start of mitosis, we refer to it as uh, the mother cell because it's going to divide into two daughter cells. So you need to know that at the end of mitosis, you are left with two daughter cells, one, one, two. So two daughter cells at the end. And you can see that these daughter cells have the exact same number of chromosomes in each cell compared to the original mother. Now you can kind of see the steps that are happening here where you have DNA replication to produce uh, the same chromosome twice joined at the middle. And this is what I was saying uh, before on the previous slides about um, how they display chromosomes to you in an exam. Um, and my best advice would be just to read the question really carefully about what they're saying about the chromosome in this X shape. But in this case, they are, so we have the, so the chromosomes from dad here and from mum here, for example. And these are then going to be split apart into each side of the cell, which then leaves you with the same genetic material at the end. So you need to know the outcomes. So each mitotic division produces two daughter cells. And those daughter cells are also genetically identical. Genetically identical. And to put it bluntly, it means that they also have the same number of chromosomes as the mother cell. So the same number, hashtag for number, of chromosomes as mother. And excuse my awful handwriting here. So they're the three points you need to know for the outcomes of mitosis. Okay, so comparing this to meiosis then, or meiosis. So like before, we start off with a mother cell at the beginning, so stage one. And as you can see, we have double the amount of genetic material in this cell. That's because we're going to go through basically mitosis, but two times. And then things happen as well in the middle. So if you just remember, it's kind of like double mitosis. That might help you remember which one's which. Because meiosis is all about getting to the end of the stage with four daughter cells instead. So one, two, three, four daughter cells. And they're all going to have half the amount of genetic material compared to the original. So you can see here we've got two blue chromosomes, two red chromosomes. They're not blue and red in real life. And then you have uh, kind of one red and one blue, although we've got something funky going on at the top here, which you don't need to know about at GCSE. Similar to mitosis, you, you don't need to know the steps involved in here, but you can probably tell that pretty much the same thing happens as mitosis. We're just dealing with double the amount because you've got four cells at the end of it. So all that does is the, the chromosomes will divide again, they'll get pulled apart and then they'll get pulled apart another time. So they're getting pulled apart twice this time, which is why it leads to half the amount of genetic material at the end. So for our table then, let's add to it. So this time we don't have two daughter cells, we have four daughter cells. 
they are genetically different. And they have half the number. So half the number of chromosomes. as the mother. Now I'm just going to point out here that the number of chromosomes for mitosis in the mother cell will always be 23 pairs or 46 in total. Sometimes they will refer to different numbers in the exam and they might ask you okay well if there's 46 in the first one how many are there in the second one and just Pay attention to the word pairs if they're referring to 23 pairs or 46 individual ones. So on the other side for meiosis or meiosis then they have 23 chromosomes. No pairs because they are genetically identical. The reason they don't have pairs is because basically they are either now a sperm or an egg cell and they are going to be joined up later down the line in sexual reproduction to form a full set later on. So they don't have pairs, they are genetically unique. So lastly, in these four mini topics, then you need to know that uncontrolled mitosis can actually lead to cancer. And this is the problem with treating cancer as well, because realistically, it's just our own cells that have become uncontrolled. And this is kind of my uh, drawing trying to show you what this can look like. So the mitosis process happens as normal. And then something happens at the end that just skyrockets this whole process and leads to loads of cells being created, even though there's no damage to repair or growth to happen. And what happens to all these cells? Well, they form tumours or they can form all sorts of problems uh, with the body depending on where this happens. Um, and that cancer can spread and obviously we're still trying to do research to figure out how we solve this problem. But you just need to be aware for the GCSE that uncontrolled mitosis can lead to cancer. And that's it for this video today, guys. Next time we'll be continuing and finishing, actually, our cell division and stem cells topic. It's quite a small topic and we've covered quite a lot today. And next time we'll talk about stem cells and their role.